Welcome back to the New Jersey State Museum's Ask the Experts video learning library, where we're digging into some of the most common questions people ask paleontologists about what we do and how we do it. Last time we talked about how paleontologists prospect to find fossils. Prospecting is where we walk around slowly looking for scraps of bone that have weathered and eroded out of the ground. One of the most common questions we get is, how do you tell the fossil from the rock? And that can be pretty tricky, so let's start digging into that question right now. There are lots of different features we use to tell if something is a fossil or a rock. Shape is the most obvious. If something looks like a bone or a tooth, it probably is. But what we usually find is a fragment of a bone or a tooth and not a whole one. So shape isn't always the most reliable feature. Well, what about color? Fossils are almost always a different color than the surrounding rock. In this case, we have some blacks, some whites, and even some orange. And as you can see, that's very different than all the surrounding gray gumbo. Texture can be an excellent hint. Some bones, especially turtle bones like these that we've been working on, have a very unusual texture or surface pattern on them. As you can see, this piece has a very clear pattern on it, and you wouldn't expect to see a pattern like that on the surface of a normal rock. Pretty much all other fossil animal bones are nice and smooth on the outer edge, just like modern bones. Now, if texture doesn't give it away, then this next hint is a dead ringer almost every single time. As you can see, even in these little pieces of fossil, they're just absolutely full of little pore spaces, just like we have in parts of our bones. In fact, we even call this spongy bone. These pore spaces often preserve very nicely, as you can see in these specimens. Those pore spaces, though, aren't just in our bones. They're in the bones of all animals, even animals that lived millions of years ago. That similarity suggests to us that we all must have inherited that feature from a common ancestor that must have lived hundreds of millions of years ago. Sometimes, though, you can't even be sure about those pore spaces. Lichens growing on the outside, or even the colors of the rock can really fool you. So there's one last trick that we can use that is absolutely foolproof every single time. You lick it. No, the fossils don't taste different from the rock. The idea here is that if these really are pore spaces, they should soak up any moisture through capillary action, creating just a little bit of suction. So if I lick it and it sticks to my tongue, then it definitely is a fossil. Let's see. All of this is a lot easier than it might seem. If you were out here with us, you could use these tricks to help you find fossils within just a few minutes. And after a short time, you'll start to develop a mental image of what you should be looking for. And then, well, you're home free because you'll start finding fossils everywhere. So far, we've shown you where to look for dinosaur fossils, how to find those fossils, and how to tell the actual fossil from the surrounding rock. But then what? If we're lucky enough to find a nice skeleton in the ground, how do we get it out? Well, we'll start digging into those questions next time. Until then, thank you for joining us, and as always, keep digging.